Okay, this is the first installment of the story known as the Trojan War. It in many ways is the singular most important saga or story of the entirety of the ancient world, and it is the subject of two of the three most important works in all of Western literature, the Iliad and the Odyssey as sung by Homer. You combine those two with the Bible, and there are no three more important works in all of Western literature. 90% of all allusions that you will encounter in Western literature as you go through all of your classes come directly from those three sources. And so we're going to go through the first two that I've mentioned, which is the Trojan War. The Trojan War, as you can see, is going to be a war fought at the city of Troy, right along here, along this little strip of water in between Europe and Asia, known as the Hellespont and it is fought between the forces of the Greeks and the people who were living in Troy. Now, this is the backstory, which is all the stuff that occurs before the Iliad. So, it starts in Greece with a woman named Leda. She is the wife of Tyndareus, and Zeus comes and impregnates her. Zeus is the main god of ancient Greece, and he, of course, is a serial rapist, but he never comes and seduces, for lack of a better term, the women in his own form, which would be that of a lightning bolt. Instead, he did so in the form of a swan, and Leda becomes pregnant. She is going to give birth to two sets of children, and the unusual thing is that they were born inside eggs. The one egg included a boy and a girl, and the other egg included a boy and a girl, but the two boys were twins. They are known collectively as the Dioscuri, or in Latin as Gemini, or Gemini, which of course is why we call the constellation that. Literally, that means the twins. They are Castor and Pollux, or if you would like the Greek term, Polydukes, known for their skills in boxing, which was Pollux, and he is the one who is an immortal. So he will be in the egg with Helen. Castor, on the other hand, was a horseman, and he was mortal, and so therefore he was in the egg with Clytemnestra. And thus, that are the two girls that are born to Leda, Helen, who is going to be the most beautiful woman in the world, and Clytemnestra, who you see on the right, was her sister. Now, the rumor or the prophecy was that Helen was indeed going to be the most beautiful woman in the world, and that's going to cause problems for the father, Tyndarius. As we know, Zeus very rarely never hangs around and helps to raise the children. That is left up to the women and perhaps their husbands, but he, Zeus from afar, will make sure that they are kept and taken care of. Now, the problem then is that if all of these kings of Greece are going to want and marry Helen, what is going to be the outcome when all of them, except for one, is rejected? And so, Tyndarius is in quite a spot, and so he consults with the very powerful and wise king of Ithaca, Odysseus, and Odysseus makes a suggestion that what they should do is that they are going to say all of the suitors, regardless if they are chosen, are going to say that they will protect Helen and Helen's interests, even if they were not the ones. And so the choice that he makes is a wise one. There are two boys, kings, King Agamemnon, is the king of the most powerful city, most powerful kingdom, Mycenae, and his brother, Menelaus, is the king of Sparta. They, then, are going to marry the two daughters of Tyndarius. Helen will be married to Menelaus, and Agamemnon will be married to Clytemnestra. Now, these two fellows were in a family that was cursed, going all the way back to their great-grandfather, Tantalus. Tantalus had made the huge mistake of killing his own son Pelops, and fed Pelops to the gods. Well, all of Pelops was not eaten, only the shoulder. And so the gods, when they found out what had happened, they put him back together. They got the craftsman Hephaestus to fashion a ivory shoulder, and in that way, they obviously put him back together. However, that family was cursed from then on because Pelops' own son, Atreus, his wife, Irope, had an affair with his brother Thyestes. So Atreus took all of Thyestes' children and killed them and fed them to Thyestes with only one surviving, Aegisthus. And so this is the family curse that Agamemnon married to Clytemnestra, king of Mycenae, and Menelaus married to Helen, king of Sparta, are then going to be dealt. Now to Troy. 
Troy was ruled over by the king Priam. His own father, Priam's father, had built the walls of Troy. Priam was the father to a hundred children, fifty sons and fifty daughters. His queen, Hecuba, was the mother of seventeen of them. They have some children more important than others. The, of course, most important is the eldest and greatest of all Trojans. Hector is his name. But there is one child that is going to be a problem, and that is the birth of the child known as Alexandros or Paris. One of their children was named Cassandra, and she had a gift of prophecy that was given to her by the god Apollo. But the problem is that Apollo cursed her when he gave her this gift, indicating that she would always tell the truth in her prophecy, but the curse with nobody would believe her, except for this one instance in which she said that this child to be born to her father and mother, Priam and Hecuba, Paris or Alexander, Alexandros, would be, of course, the destruction of a great city. Not wanting this child to be the cause of the destruction of the great city of Troy, over which Priam ruled, they sent him to the nearby mountain, Mount Ida, where he will grow up as a shepherd, because how much trouble can a shepherd be? And he falls in love and marries Oinoni and lives a boring shepherd's life. No destruction for a city there. The third place is going to be that of Mount Olympus. Thetis was a Nereid. These are the 50 daughters of the old man of the sea, Nereus, and she was incredibly beautiful. As a matter of fact, instantaneously one of the gods would have gone for her, but it was a curse or a prophecy saying that the child of Thetis would be greater than the father. So no god wanted to be overthrown by their own child, most especially Zeus, and so it was decreed that she has to marry a mortal, not a god. So they chose Peleus from Thea, one of the great cities, kingdoms, and thus a marriage was set up. They, of course, are going to have a party to celebrate this marriage, and everybody is going to be invited except for one. That is Eris, the god or the goddess of discord, the goddess of troublemaking, the goddess of strife and fighting. They wouldn't want her there because she would be the one whispering into everybody's ears rumors and they would be caused to fight by her, her Latin name, Discordia. So she took an apple and on this apple she wrote the Greek word Callisti, meaning in the date of case, for the most beautiful. She threw this golden apple into the party and whereupon goddesses all saw who the apple was for thinking themselves the most beautiful, begin fighting. It's kind of like the stereotype. If you've ever seen a funny video of how women fight often over the bouquet is thrown by the bride. Oh, it was quite a melee. And three goddesses, their names, Hera, the queen of the gods, wife of Zeus, Athena, the great powerful daughter of Zeus, and goddess of wisdom, skill, and war, and Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, all decide they want the apple. They fight amongst themselves, immediately going to Zeus and saying, you decide who will get this apple, knowing that it would be an utter disaster to pick his wife over his daughters or one of his daughters over another daughter and a wife. Needs someone, needs someone to make the decision instead of him. And so he casts his eyes down to the earth and sees a shepherd on Mount Ida doing nothing. And so bringing his messenger boy Hermes goes down to Paris and makes him decide. Now Paris is no fool. He says, well, I can't make this decision if y'all are fully clothed. Demands that they disrobe to make the decision as to who is the most beautiful. Now each of the goddesses being absolutely concerned and confident, still concerned, are going to bribe him. Hera being the queen of the gods, is going to bribe Paris with the greatest kingdom on earth. Athena bribes him as the goddess of skill and war, being a great conquering hero remembered forever. And Aphrodite promises that she will give to him the most beautiful woman in the world if she is the one chosen. He chooses Aphrodite. 
Immediately, Aphrodite sets in motion to reward him, makes him established back at Troy, and also makes him establish a mission to go and visit on a diplomatic mission, Sparta. And so it is there that she, having given all of her gifts, Aphrodite, to Helen, and also having favored Paris amongst all men, that's what make them the most alluring. That's what makes them have the most appeal because of the gifts of Aphrodite. She then sends him where he, in quotation, abducts Helen from Sparta. She went willing. They were attracted to each other immediately and thus abandons her own husband. The next installment, which will be on the next recording, is going to be the reactions of the Greeks and all the things that they